Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome, everyone, to today, today's meeting of the Licensing Board. Um, welcome back returning members and officers, and we have some uh, new licensing members. So I think it would be a good idea for everyone to introduce themselves so uh, everyone knows who, who everyone is. Uh, can we start with the officers, please? Hi. Hello again. I'm Alison Brock, Technical Support Team Manager. Oh. Good morning, all. My name's uh, Alison Stocker, sorry, another Alison, and I'm the Senior Licensing Officer um, for, obviously, for Thanet District Council, so my main remit is enforcement, um, so I will be dealing with um, all the scrap metal, taxes, um, alcohol, yeah, any, anything really tattooist, anything that needs a licence, then I'll be out and about uh, making sure everything's done correctly. Good morning, everybody. I'm Morgan Sprouts. I'm the Regulatory Services Manager, so I sit over Environmental Health and uh, Licensing Officers are also in my team. Uh, and uh, yeah, I've just come along today um, uh, to uh, observe some of the um, uh, some of the cases and uh, obviously the change in policy that's uh, been put forward as well. Thank you. Good morning, Councillor John Dennis, Garlinge Ward. Good morning, Brenda Rogers, uh, Peg on Cliffs End. Morning all, Becky Wing, Central Harbour, Ramsgate. Hi, um, I'm Cedric Towney, uh, Councillor for Cliftonville East. Harry Scobie, Cliftonville. Pat Wilkinson, Sir Moses, Montefiore. Deborah Owen Hughes, Northward Ward. Good morning, Councillor Ara, Central Harbour, Ramsgate. Good morning, uh, Councillor Corinna Huxley, Eastcliff Wolf Ramsgate. Thanks. Uh, I'm Councillor Alan Curry, Cliftonville West, and uh, Chair of Licensing. Uh, my name's Steve, Steve Matthews. I'm your Democratic Services Officer covering licensing for today. Good morning. My name is Joseph Kutange. I'm your Senior Litigation Lawyer. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. A uh, little bit of uh, housekeeping now. Um, if the fire alarm is activated, please take the stairs down to the reception area and out of the building to the green in Hawley Square, which is the assembly point. Please do not use the lifts. Officers will assist you and advise when it is deemed safe to return to the council offices. I would advise that if filming takes place, anyone in attendance in the public area may have their image captured. I urge anyone filming proceedings to avoid filming members of the public particularly if there are children present. Does anyone intend to film the meeting? That's a no. Uh, would everyone present please ensure that their mobile phones are turned to silent and that they are not used to make or receive phone calls while the meeting is in progress? I wish to inform members that due to a clerical error, Error. <laughs> I've, got e I've, got, I've got era here. A clerical era. I think it's an error. We don't want, we don't want an era. Uh, agenda, <laughs> agenda item nine was not added to the full agenda until yesterday afternoon. As a result, uh, agenda item seven, exclusion of public and press, will now apply to both agenda item eight and item nine. Can members please make note of this? Uh, apologies, I have um, apologies from Councillor Bainbridge. Are there any more apologies? Um, we, we do have one or two members um, who aren't here today. The traffic is quite bad, so uh, we, we hope that a couple of members might uh, show up soon. Councillor uh, Curry. Item two. Sorry, sorry. sorry. Um, I believe um, Linda Wright put apologies to Sam Bainbridge. Um, but she tried to ring me and it was difficult um, okay. hearing on the mobile. Okay, can so we, we, apologies can, can for, if um, she's not here, can you make apologies, please? Councillor Wright. Uh, declarations of interest. Are there any de declarations of interest? Councillor Scobie. Yes, I need to declare uh, an interest in, I think it's eight and nine. So I will leave at, after item seven. Thank you, Councillor Scobie. Um, please can I have a member propose and second that the minutes of the licensing board meeting held on the 18th of April 2023 be approved as a correct record. Councillor Wynne. 
Can I have a second? Second that, Councillor Huxley, thank you. Uh, item four, <coughs> uh, changes and updates to licensing officers enforcement policy. Please can I ask Miss Alison Stocker, senior licensing officer to present the report. Lovely, thank you, Chair. Good morning, all. Um, as per my report, please find the licensing officer enforcement policy. Um, due to the length of time it has been in operation, legislation has changed uh, and the policy needs to be updated. The options are set out at the bottom of my report, which are 3.1 and 3.2. Thank you. I propose, Chair, okay. as, as to uh, that's three point one. Yeah, yeah. to um, uh, uh, t agree the uh, okay, thank you. policy. Um, seconded by Councillor Ara. Sorry, I've got this down to the presenting room. Jim, drive us downstairs as well. Uh, yeah, if you could join the meeting, Councillor yeah. Manners. Thank you. Confusion there. And someone has told Jim he's going to Yeah, I think he's going to tell. Councillor Manners, I think. Okay. So 3.1, um, proposer Councillor Wing, seconded by Councillor Huxley. Thank you very much. Uh, item 5, um, driver knowledge test. Uh, please can I ask Miss Alison Brock, technical support team, uh, manager to present the report. Thank you, Chair. Morning, everyone. Um, as some of you will remember, back in March, we brought a report to board about the knowledge tests following representations from some of the local operators. Um, you agreed some decisions at the board to drop the second test down to half price, uh, to look at the options of an evening course with immediate effect to add an online safeguarding course, which is basically was an online classroom version, so um, the trainer could actually see who is taking the course, because the previous one was on there. Um, anybody could have taken it for anybody, basically. So that's in place now. And then going forward was to look at changing the knowledge test, maybe bringing in a one-day course, so that's what I've got before you here, is a one-day course with a company called Green Penny. They actually come, they would come here to the offices or they'd find their own venue. They do up to, I think it's 12 people a day. Um, and they go through the whole thing, all the safeguarding, you know, driver awareness. They do all sorts of things during the whole day. And then at the end of it, they do um, a test for the drivers. We can add to that, we can add our own little local knowledge test and also they can do an English test as well if they feel necessary for certain applicants. So the options are basically to leave the knowledge test as it currently is or we trial the Green Penny one day course. We have made some slight changes to the current test. We've changed some of the questions because some of them were a bit odd, a bit ambiguous. So we've changed quite a few of them. Um, so your options now are we leave the current course as it is or we go and trial a one-day course. Thank you. Thank you, Alison. Um, I imagine um, members would like to debate this uh, or ask some questions. Hello. Oh, well. um, you talk about the option for an English test. I think you should have that as a matter of fact because there are a lot of uh, overseas uh, drivers around the area and I think that would be helpful, especially there are a lot of elderly people that use taxis and, you know, they need to communicate. And I think that's an uh, important aspect of it. Thank you. Councillor Wing. Uh, how will we ensure that a, an external company is delivering at the same quality? Uh, I mean, I've been on one-day first aid courses where you know nobody's going to fail unless you're absolutely ridiculous, but it does concern me 
uh, that we're putting people behind the wheel of a car. And also I'd like to follow up on the communication. I don't necessarily think it's just about uh, being able to, ha being able to uh, speak in English uh, well enough to communicate with people. It's all also around the style of communication people may have. Uh, is there a customer care element of it? Uh, I'm particularly concerned because a lot of people who use our taxis are either under the influence of alcohol or they're elderly or they've got disabilities or they're parents with children. So there's a degree of vulnerability that comes around uh, many people that use our taxis. Yeah, I mean, in the actual um, the standards that the, the government recommend, they do actually recommend an English test. So that is something we do want to bring in. Um, within the course, you can see they've got um, disability and equality awareness. They've got their safeguarding responsibilities, um, you know, how to report a crime, the highway code. They cover all of that and customer care. So we can basically tailor this to what we see fit for here they do do this is a course that is used by other councils currently am i assuming you, you said you'd monitor i'm assuming you'd you'd actually maybe have a little highlight by the side of these drivers to see if there are any benefits or non-benefits moving forward yeah i mean for the first couple of times that we that the course is run we'll probably have myself or one of the team will sit in um and they will come and do a demonstration of the course if you wanted that <laughs> i don't think you want to sit there for a whole day but they, they could come and do uh, maybe next what's it july one isn't it they might be able to pop along and do a little demonstration of what they actually include in the day course for you so alison is there a sort of offstead of um you know <laughs> companies like that i mean how if there were concerns could you go back to them so, do you look at how they perform do you get feedback from the people who take the tests things like that we obviously speak to the councils who currently use them there only seems to be a couple really this blue pen um green penny and blue lamp trust um obviously at the moment the safeguarding course that's online is either with green penny or blue lamp they seem to be the main two um two firms that do all of this so they're used by a lot of a lot of other local authorities Yeah, apologies for joining the meeting late. We, were, we weren't told it was here. We were both told, I guess, because we're new members. We're probably not on the system. Um, anyway. Um, yeah, the, my, my question was um, the, uh, the element of knowledge that's in the exam at the moment, is that going to be part of the one-day course? I've, I've kind of caught the tail end of this, so I wasn't sure what, would, what the situation was there. put my mic on yeah we can add the local knowledge test onto this a um, couple of the other councils that use it do have their own little knowledge tests at the end so that's not an issue we will be putting local knowledge on there because I think it's important so will the local knowledge test stay the same as the local knowledge test at the moment or will it be a simplified version I would think it I'd have to obviously have a chat with them see how many because obviously at the moment we've got what we got on there 40, 20 or 40, no, 20 questions, isn't it? So we may cut that down a little bit, but the ones that are on there at the moment are where's such and such a pub or where's such and such a hotel, and then we give them a multiple choice of where they are. So that's what we do now. So we'll definitely have some form of local knowledge on it. Councillor Owen Hughes. Uh, this falls really nicely for me. In a previous life, I used to be a Department of Transport driving examiner. <laughs> So I'm really interested in, uh, in the test and uh, the training um, before. So before we make any decisions, is there a, a way we can have a look at it or go see them? Or? They will come and do a demonstration if you wanted to. Um, obviously, this course doesn't include driving. It's purely sitting in a classroom base and going through all the all the side of it but we wouldn't be able to bring, obviously bring that along to hopefully the July board meeting just to pick up from that um, from the enforcement side if we bring drivers to board with regards to their driving abilities we do have an option on there for them to take 
um, a driving test or a, you know moving on and having a, a, an extra test I think it is actually with green penny as well so um, that's the way that we would deal with that we would ask them to have do a test so that's a towning do all these uh, taxi drivers have British uh, driving licenses no they don't have to necessarily why is that if it's a European license, they don't have to, do they? So the problem that we are having is that a lot of drivers um, take a, a, a test, if you like, abroad. Uh, they then come, can come over to this country and convert their licence to a British driving licence, uh, which then enables them to work to drive, obviously, on our roads. And once they've held that driving licence for a while, they can work as a taxi driver. How long is that valid for then? Because I tell you what, I have a home in Portugal and it, it restricts me as to how long I can drive on my British license in Portugal and then I have to have a Portuguese license eventually. Do, now, we're not part of Europe, so do we apply anything like that? No, I mean, as um, Alison said, basically, they if you've got a license in, say, Poland or somewhere, you come over here and then you just convert it to a British licence. They don't, as far as I know, have to do any form of driving test like we do to get our licence. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, what, a question following from uh, uh, Councillor Towning. Um, is there any verification procedure to make sure that their licence is actually valid, that... Um, it's not a Photoshop license. Do we have any way that we know that these people have taken a proper driving course in, in the country that issued the license? Yeah, we obviously see all the paperwork. We have to see all the originals of everything and we can do online checks as well if we need to. Councillor Wing. Uh, just to sort of, uh, after four years, we have had drivers in here. We've forced them to undertake a British driving license. So that 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 is that is part of the tool of, of enforcement that we can use as a committee. Uh, the, you know, the vast majority of our taxi drivers are responsible on the road. Unfortunately, like everything else, we have a, a, num a small minority of taxi drivers who, who think they can be above the law. So I feel quite confident that we've got in place at, at checking systems and a way of enforcing, and it, it's invariably a very positive, you know, we don't want to not have taxi drivers because we've got a huge shortage of taxi drivers. <laughs> so I, I sit here quite confident that although we're accepting foreign licences, that uh, we, we have all the things in, pl in place to keep people as safe as possible on, as taxi drivers. Councillor Manners. Um, just following on from the new, the proposed course, um, assuming a driver pitches up and he's got all his documents in order and he's competent to pass all the relevant examinations and tests that might be put in front of him, uh, what would be the timescale from initial application to receiving his license under the proposed scheme versus the existing scheme? Well, basically, they're, they're no different. I mean... You, the, the main thing that holds up a driver getting their licence is getting their DBS back from the DBS checks. We have no control over that. Um, they can apply for their DBS now and then they could take the test in two weeks' time. Um, if their DBS hasn't come back, there's nothing we can do. It's very difficult to speed up the process. But if, with this course in place, if somebody previously had got their medical and the medical was dated within a month because that's what it has to be. Um, we'd got their DBS and their DBS has to be dated within a month as well. If not, they can sign up for the update service, which is what we're trying to encourage everybody to do. Because shortly we're going to have to be checking everybody's DBS every six months, which is quite an onerous task for us. But that's why we need them to be on the update service so we can just log on and check them on the update service. So if they... If they have their medical in place, if they've got their DBS, if they then pass this course, they could have their licence, in theory, the next day. Can I just uh, ask a question here? Um, uh, going back to um, the, uh, the knowledge um, questions, I remember at a previous um, 
licensing meetings, the operators were saying some of the licensing questions were difficult. We agreed to look at them, and I know you and your team, Alison, have, have tweaked some of the questions. Uh, just, just to confirm that, though, that the new uh, knowledge questions will be forwarded onto uh, the new Green Penny test by yourself and the team. Well, obviously, we will have discussions with Green Penny and see how they feel they feel the best way to go forward um, with all the things that they do on here. They do cover everything that we cover in our current, current test and probably more, to be honest. Uh, Mr. Katangi. Yes, uh, just for guidance, um, just to assist the board, uh, the board should consider whether if the board agrees to a green penny one day course, is it likely to increase uh, public safety? So that's a, a main question for the board to consider. Thank you. Councillor Wing. Uh, could, I, could I maybe suggest that we agree, to the, we agree to the changes, but we review in a year's time so that, so that we get a chance to come back and, and look at how this is happening. Uh, anything that can increase driver knowledge, but also enables a flexible approach to people accessing the chance to train and be a taxi driver is, is got to be a positive thing. But I, I don't want us to just run down a run down an alley and not review it. So I maybe suggest that we agree to the changes and review in a year's time. I, I believe that if we did agree to the, uh, the Green Penny test, this would take a while to implement anyway. So we, we, we would remain with the old um, format for some time. Councillor Huxley. Could we have asked, as Councillor Deborah Owen Hughes said, could we have a demonstration from them sometime? so that we know what the drivers are going to have to take. Thanks. Yep, I can try and get that arranged for the next, um, the next meeting, if possible. Um, members, uh, the, the options are to leave the knowledge test as it currently stands or agree to the Green Penny one day course to be started as soon as possible. And this could include uh, some caveats that we could uh, add. Um, so um, does any member want to propose one of the options? Councillor Towning. Yeah, 3.1, thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor Scobie. Chair, can we have a caveat that um, we come back in a year's time and review it, as Councillor Wing has suggested? And that we have a view of the, uh, we have a demonstration of the Green Penny course. Alison, could we add that? Um, if you could draw that up, yeah. Okay. Um, sh so that's. Uh, let me just check that. Uh, three point one or three point two. Thank you, Mrs. <laughs> Councillor <Matt. laughs> Agree to the Green Penny One Day Course to be started as soon as possible. Three point two. Thank you. So moving on to item six, um, licensing and gambling statement report. Please can I ask uh, Ms. Alison Brock, technical support team manager, to present the report. Morning, hello again. Um, it's a bit of a short one, this one. Um, as you can see, every council has to have a licensing policy statement and a gambling policy statement, and ours are out of date at the moment. The actual content of them as such isn't out of date really because the gambling act hasn't changed since it first came in um the the gambling act is being looked at at the moment and we've got a meeting i think it's 22nd of june with regard to some changes that might be coming for it so what i'm just basically asking with these two policies if you all agree to them being in place for another 12 months and then obviously as soon as the changes are made with the gambling via the gambling policy via the government and with some that are looking uh, with the licensing policy, we will we'll, we'll start work on them immediately and have them all ready to go. Thank you. Uh, the recommendation to the committee members is to consider the report and provide recommendations to officers going forward. Uh, would members like to debate this item? No. 
Uh, the options are to agree to the statements being in place for another 12 months or to not approve the extension of the current statements. Does any member want to propose one of these options? I'd like to propose 3.1. <laughs> thank you, Councillor Scobie. Can I have a seconder? Councillor Wing, thank you. Uh, do members all agree? Agreed. Thank you. Agenda item seven, exclusion of public and press. Um, we, we, we don't have any uh, public and press here. Okay, um, uh, please can I, uh, I have a, a member propose and second that the public and press be excluded from the meeting. Can I have a proposal please? Councillor Rogers and a second, uh, Councillor Wing. Do members agree? Thank you.